All right, this is a Detroit Diesel 853, and I had water in the oil on an engine, this engine here, which was recently rebuilt. I did, well, not, it was an in-frame rebuild that we did about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and uh, got water in the oil when I checked. I was underway, steam started coming out of the back, and so I shut it down. I checked the dipstick. And uh, the dipstick, as you can see, has a little bit of, a little bit of rust on it, a little bit of corrosion. Um, the, you can't really see the water and the oil right now, but uh, maybe you can see on my finger. It's not the worst water in the oil case ever. Right now you can't even tell there's water in the oil because it's been sitting for about a week since this happened. But uh, there is water in there. The very tip of it you might be able to see a little better. Anyway, so I went on a search to try to figure out where this water was and I started the most, uh, the only place on the outside of the engine where water or coolant and uh, oil can mix and that's the oil cooler which on these this is a, in a boat so it's a marine engine so you have the uh, heat exchanger here uh, I have the valve cover off here but uh, you got to come around to the back of this come around to the back of this this is the looking at the front of the Detroit 853 here's the uh, alternator on um, the starters up there a little further here's the water pump um, the um, heat exchanger that ex you know uh, you have uh, salt water or you know seawater ocean water or lake water that runs through here and then you have the coolant that runs through it too so it cools down the coolant but uh, we keep coming around back here onto this side of the motor and this is where we see the uh, here's the uh, water pump and here's the oil cooler right here uh, so so that was my first uh, place to look even though um, the ma the uh, manual actually tells you to uh, to look there that's um, even though um, coolant pressure or you know water pressure coolant pressure is going to be lower than oil pressure so it would make more sense that you would see oil in the coolant and in my case i saw coolant in the oil so it wasn't really the most likely place but i went ahead and took it off um which is this is a really heavy thing to take off you take it off with the the water cooler housing um there's a uh, there's a um, place in right there that goes into the engine. So that's the gasket that you have to replace. I didn't have it, so I used a, a high temperature JB weld, which uh, I've used before in that, and it works fine. And then I just went ahead and uh, took out the oil cooler and put in a new oil cooler. I ordered a new one. It's like 250 bucks for a new one. Because this is a 50 plus year old engine, I decided, oh, I might as well just replace it. But when I did the pressure test on the old oil cooler, it wasn't leaking at all. Here's the uh, old old oil cooler here. This is what it looks like. So to do the pressure test on it, you just put a plate over the whole thing, over one side, which um, I, I took off, but you put a plate over one side or you just uh, figure out a way to plug this hole Either I mean, you can just use a cork to plug it if you want, and then you pressurize this side either with a, um, a pressure tester like this, or um, or a uh, uh, just a, some compressed air or whatever. And then you just look for leaks inside these uh, gills or these these fins or coils, and uh, this one passed. There was no leaks. So there was nothing wrong with that. So that wasn't my problem. So um, next thing I did was I filled, I refilled it back up with coolant 
I got this tool, uh, which you can just rent at AutoZone, um, and then you just pressurize it by by pumping pumping this. And uh, I put in about seven to ten pounds of pressure. Doesn't take a lot of a whole lot of pressure. Um, you could bring it up a little higher if you wanted by just pumping it, uh, much like this. See now it's up to about eight pounds and bring about to 10 pounds of pressure. Um, then I took uh, the valve cover off on this side to see if uh, I saw any sort of leaks or anything like that. And um, so this is uh, the fuel injector. These are the fuel lines. Um, and uh, I noticed water, this one I took apart, but I noticed water was dripping down here. You can see it just dripping down there. It's a really slow but steady drip of water. Just drip, drip, drip. I found out it's coming from right between this copper liner. You can see it bubbling up all around right between this copper liner and uh, um, where the, uh, the fuel injector goes down in. So I took all that off. Um, it's being held up now with this. Um, I had to take off the uh, throttle regulator thing here. Um, but uh, so we have water right there. So the only way water could get right there is either a blown head gasket. It's actually coming through pretty good right now. Or uh, a cracked head. So at this point, this head has to come off, in my opinion. Um, but also pressurizing the system revealed a few other leaks, like this uh, coolant line was leaking here. So I replaced that just to get pressure up and make sure that there were no other leaks. I'm going to have to, uh, and I visually checked um, any coolant line that I could find. And uh, so the only place where I have found a leak currently is right here. Now I'm going to take off the other valve cover, just do a visual inspection, see if I see any leaks there under pressure. And if I don't, then I'm leaving that head alone. I'm just going to take this off and uh, inspect what the head looks like underneath, see if I see any cracks or see if I can understand what went wrong to cause all this water to leak here. If you want to give me any theories of what to look for, I would appreciate it. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts.